Welcome into Sports Memo's betting podcast, college basketball for Thursday slate. We're talking February 27th basketball card here with Mid-Major Matt. Mid-Major Matt, welcome to the pod. How are you? Uh, doing well, Drew. Looking forward to it. Just a couple of weeks left in the regular season. We got conference tournament action. And so, uh, yeah, looking forward to the madness as we get closer to March. Absolutely, man. And uh, as you guys can tell in his name, Mid-Major Matt, we're going to be talking some Mid-Major games here. And he's been good on the podcast of late. So uh, hopefully can find some more winners than losers. We got five games on the docket for the Thursday card and a best bet at the end. We'll start off here actually at the top of the card, 601-602, 6 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Pacific tip here. Delaware at Charleston. We're seeing Charleston minus four at home here. 139 and a half being the total pretty much across the board. We're seeing a 140 and a half out there as well as the total mid-major match. So we got Delaware at Charleston, Charleston short home favorites here. I feel like uh, the market is is not favoring Delaware here. I think we're getting a lot of short prices. I think part of it is because of the last game they lost against Hofstra, which I'll admit I had Delaware at home. They got uh, blasted by Hofstra. But if you look at this Blue Hens team, they're eight and two in their last 10. Uh, they are one of the more efficient offenses in college basketball, 13th and two point shooting percentage, 77th and three point shooting percentage, 26th and free throw shooting percentage. They are six and five on the road and they actually won at Hofstra by two points. They're seven and three as an underdog so far this year. Uh, if you look at Charleston, they've lost four straight. They've lost five times at home this season. They've scored less than 70 points in five straight games. And they're 6-10 and 10 against the spread as a favorite. Now, they did beat William Mary and Hofstra at home, and they have Grant Riller, who's probably a top-five player in the CAA. First meeting between these two is way back on December 30th. It was a 70-possession game. Charleston won 75-63. to 63. They outscored Delaware by 15 down the stretch, and Grant Riller had 22 points in the win. Delaware shot the ball really well from two. They were 65% from two, but they were 3 of 25 from three-point land. Now, look, I know Delaware came back down to earth last time out against Hofstra at home, but I think there's some value here. You know, there's some fours out there, as you said, maybe a four and a half. But, like, I think Delaware is a, is a live team in this one. Their offense is really efficient. Charleston is the type of team that has shown they can lose at home. And if Riller gets into any sort of foul trouble or if he's not shooting well, then Charleston's really not a very good basketball team. So I think Delaware's worth a look here. Um, if you want to wait, see if you can milk a half a point out of it. This four is good, but I think we could get better, maybe a four and a half or five. Maybe people look at that last result by Delaware and say, hmm, I don't know if I want to back these guys. So maybe you wait a little bit. Uh, you know, when you watch this in the morning, if it's still four, take it. But if it's higher than that, then I think you get some value there at four and a half. And heck, maybe even it goes up to five. Who knows? All right, Matt. Good stuff at the start here. We got six two one six two two up next eight o'clock Eastern five o'clock Pacific tip. Youngstown State at Green Bay. We got Green Bay minus four in the hook at home. That's minus four and a half home favorites. One fifty six being the total here, Matt. So I like to educate everybody, too, about some of these things, because certainly as we get closer to these conference tournaments, which start next week, there are some oddities that people need to know about. When you look at Green Bay, they have the 11th quickest tempo in the country. They have the fastest offensive possessions in the country at 14.5 seconds per pop. And in conference, they've played nine games of 75 plus possessions for those at home. Now, they don't shoot the ball the greatest. They are 25 25th in the country in three-point shooting percentage, but their and their defense is hideous. They're 314th in three-point percentage defense. So, they put up a lot of shots and uh, they have a lot of possessions. So that's why this total is pretty high. When you look at Youngstown State, they're quite the opposite. 263rd in pace. But in this conference play, they've ten played a bunch of games with quick possessions. They don't want to run, but at IUPUI, they had a 73 possession game. At Wright State, they had a 71 possession game. Five times they've scored 70 points or more on the road. The first meeting between these two, uh, Youngstown State won 98-94 in overtime at home in an 80 possession game. Now you're wondering, okay, that's a little, that's a high scoring game, but. At the end of regulation, it was 81 all. Both teams shot over 50% from two. They were 34 of 43 from the free throw line combined. I don't think this 156 is high enough here. I think Green Bay drags Youngstown State into a quicker game. And, uh, you know, they really can't set totals high enough for this Green Bay team right now. 156 is about the number I'm comfortable with here. If it inches up any higher, then maybe you have to think about it a little bit. But at 156, I like the over here because I think Green Bay, especially at home, is going to get this thing going. And uh, Youngstown State We'll just play along and, and uh, we'll have a high scoring game. Mid major Matt, next game up. It's actually the next game on the rotation, 623 624, also an eight o'clock Eastern tip. Detroit Mercy 
Illinois, Chicago. I believe I got that right here. Minus six in the hook. Illinois, Chicago at home. 141 the total. Yes, you did get that right. And this is also another uh, Horizon game. Uh, UIC's had a weird season. They had the, the, a couple of their stars were injured at the start of the year. One guy, we had no idea. He got suspended. We had no idea for how long. And then all of a sudden, he kind of just appeared in the lineup. So they've had a weird season. But now that everybody's healthy, they've won five of their last seven. Here's the oddity about these two teams. Both of them are in the top 35 in shortest defensive possessions, which means people are finding open looks against them. Well, maybe not necessarily open looks, but they're getting shots up in a quick pace. UIC is 32nd in terms of the shortest possession times on defense. Plus, they turn it over a ton. They turn it over almost 23% of their possessions. They're decent shooters from three-point land. They're good defensively against the three. When you look at Detroit, they've lost six of their last seven. Uh, They're coming off a four straight at home because the horizon has this really weird schedule system where teams play four or five in, uh, in a ho- at home in a row and then they get these road stretches as well. Detroit is 18th shortest in possession times for opposing offenses. They can't shoot a lick from three uh, from two-point land. They're 343rd ranked, but they are the second best free throw shooting team in the land, which is really odd. Their defense isn't very good. 261st in two-point defense, 309th in three-point defense, so they're not exactly great on defense. The first meeting between these two, Detroit won at home 70-69 to in a 66-possession game. Both teams, as we kind of would expect, very efficient from two-point land in that thing. UIC out-rebounded Detroit, and UIC had 14 turnovers, which we talked about was an issue with them. The 140 number is interesting. I think that we may see a lot more shots. We may see this game push closer to 70 possessions. Um, I, I feel like the over is worth a look here between these two because you're going to get a lot of shots. Uh, you're going to get a lot of possessions. Now, granted, they're two offenses, but I feel like we talked about this last week, Drew. Sometimes the two bad offenses, if you have enough possessions, you could see them creep over this number. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. By the time you watch this, whenever it goes up, if, it, if the number goes up, I'm not going to like it as much. If the number goes down from the 140, then I'll definitely be interested because I think that these two could get over the number. We saw they went 70-69 in the first meeting in a 66 possession game. We could see that number creep up over. It could be a little tight. So I like the over at 140. And if it certainly falls below that, then I would take it. And if it goes up, then I would consider it and maybe ask me or tweet me in the morning and see if I still like to play. Tweet him at mid-major Matt and uh, Matt, you're there in uh, Richmond, Virginia, work for ESPN uh, uh, Richmond there. And, and w- what time's your show at again? Uh, I'm on from three to four weekdays and 11 to noon on Saturdays. My 11 to noon show on Saturdays that basically previews all the state schools or as many as we can get to over an hour. So that's VCU, Richmond, uh, UVA, TAC, William & Mary, JMU. We do all that stuff and over a nice, neat hour package. Cool, cool. Good stuff, Matt. And uh, guys, we have, we have a coupon code for this podcast, actually for Rob Vino. He's uh, really hot in college basketball. His 30-day all-access package, which gets you most of the way through the uh, March Madness tournament, will include all the NIT, CIT, all the conference tournaments. Rob Vino's 30-day all-access for just $249. That's $100 off using the coupon code Vino. 30 days that's v-e-n-o three zero d-a-y-s at checkout vino 30 days for his 30 day all access package we got uh eastern kentucky at murray state up next mid-major matt eight o'clock eastern tip again here murray state minus 12 at home 148 the total matt So this is an interesting one as well. This is an informational type thing here that I'd like to give out. So Eastern Kentucky has been really hot in OBC play. They're 11 and five. They have five road wins in the conference and they lost by eight at Austin P. I had that one in that game because Eastern Kentucky is the fourth quickest team in the country. That's right. They're the fourth quickest team in the country. Teams have, they have the 29th shortest offensive possession time and they have the second defense, shortest defensive possession time. So there's going to be a lot of shots. Once again, when Eastern Kentucky's out there, they don't shoot the two very well 269th in the country they don't defend the two very well 332nd there's like 353 teams so when you think about it eastern kentucky is way towards the bottom uh murray state 13 3 in the ovc they've won all but one of their home games in conference by double digits they only beat eastern illinois by three uh, Murray State plays at a slightly faster than average pace. You're not going to get the racers, the connotation of the racers. They don't play like they do with uh, John Morant and everything, but they'll go when they have the opportunity. They are 64th in two point uh, percentage. They are 38th in three point percentage, and they're 58th in two point percentage defense. Now, these two teams haven't played yet this year, so we kind of went back to look at last year. 
Granted, Murray State was a lot better last year, but Eastern Kentucky played at almost a faster pace last year than they do this year. The two scores, 10270 Murray State at Eastern Kentucky in a 79 possession game, 9785 Murray State at Murray in an 84 possession game. Uh, I know that you just said that the numbers around 148, which means it fell a little bit from the last time I looked at because it, it was at 150, which I, I think kind of plays into it here. Whether you want to run against Eastern Kentucky or not, it seems like this is the type of team that, the you know, the shots are just going to be there. And so Murray State may not necessarily want to run, but East Kentucky is going to get you going a little bit. Lean to the over here, I think, once again, because I think that Murray State is going to run. I think Eastern Kentucky can make things interesting a little bit. They may even cover this number. I'm not quite sure. I don't think I'm going to take that. But I think the over is a live thing here because Eastern Kentucky, even if you want to play slow, they're going to force you to play faster and you're going to get a ton of open shots. I mean, Major Matt, looking at your page here, guys, sportsmemo.com, you had your free play, George Washington versus uh, Richmond. Do you think you have like advantages when you're betting, you know, the Richmonds of the world and uh, teams there close to you? Well, I'm not going to say I'm like I'm inside that. Let's not have any sort of connotation here that I'm rigging games or anything like that. But, yeah, I would feel like I've covered these teams. I interview players and coaches and I know people in some of these teams. And so tonight when the you know, on Wednesday night when they played GW, I've seen and I've made some money on GW this year because I think the Colonials have an interesting mix of talent. I think Richmond on the road is a team that has shown that they've got some cracks occasionally. So we had the over. It went well over. Also gave the small recommendation on George Washington which also covered as well. If GW actually hit their free throws, they might have won the game outright, but they didn't. They covered. They went over. But, yeah, I think VCU, Richmond, Tech and UVA a little bit, JMU, William & Mary. You know, we've talked about William & Mary a lot on this podcast, and they're not playing on Thursday night or we'd do it again. But, yeah, I feel like I know the teams in my area a little bit better than some people do. Unfortunately, some guy tweeted me today. I felt so bad. Uh, he's like, I'm putting a, a bunch of money on VCU tonight. And I tweeted, and I'm like, eh, I wouldn't do that. And I don't know if I heard back from him or not, but unfortunately, you know, they lost and they didn't cover. So hopefully he uh, took my advice on that one. And uh, that that speaks to, you know, proper money management. Don't put too, too much on any one bet. Um, Colonials, George Washington here. They got their best player, Amir Potter, back, right? Does that have something to do with you looking to kind of bet on them or at least cover numbers? Well, I mean, I'm looking at them in certain situations. I'm not ready to play them on the road. I did play them at uh, Duquesne, and I, I just more so that I didn't believe in Duquesne that night. And But then again, they're just coming off a loss by 10 against LaSalle, who's terrible. So, like, GW is a very interesting team, and when we start doing our conference tournament previews and we start pointing out teams that I like and dislike— GW could be one of those teams because they just they play this interesting style. They're so young and they're so fast and they're so dynamic that sometimes it works out for them and sometimes it doesn't. The Potter thing was nice. They got blown out at Richmond because he didn't play. Now, Blake Francis didn't play for Richmond either in that game, but it's something to consider. Remember, also, when we talk about this, and there's just two weeks left, when you look at these earlier games, don't blindly go off of the first score because if you look and saw uh, Richmond won by 21 or 22, you'd be like, oh, well, then they're going to definitely cover the number in foggy bottom. But both teams didn't have their leading scores. GW was coming off that four overtime game against Davidson. They clearly didn't have their legs with them. So you really have to consider situations when you look at that first box score on the way to that second or potentially third game as we get in the conference tournament time. Guys, check him out at sportsmemo.com. He's mid-major. Matt obviously knows his college basketball. Uh, great handicapper going into March Madness and the conference tournament starting up just next week. So we got... Uh, one game left here, the nightcap mid-major, Matt, and then we'll uh, hit a best bet from you. So we got 10 o'clock Eastern tip here, and it's a watch and win opportunity. CBS Sports Network, so a true degenerate special on the West Coast. We got St. Mary's at Santa Clara, minus six St. Mary's on the road, 143 the total. I'm a little bit more interested in this one, mid-major, Matt, because I'm likely going to bet who you recommend here, man. Oh, oh, okay. No pressure here. Uh, so remember, we talked about this probably a couple weeks ago. St. Mary's is going to Gonzaga on Saturday uh, and for a huge game. Now, granted, St. Mary's is probably in the NCAA tournament, and I'm pretty sure I haven't looked at the standings lately, but Gonzaga's got a pretty firm hold of the one, and if they don't, I'm pretty sure I'm guessing BYU probably has a chance at the one. So there's stuff to play for for St. Mary's, but it's not as big, especially going on the road. It, they meant more when they hosted Gonzaga than going on the road. Let's take a look at St. 
Marys. They're 337th in tempo, so they're one of the slowest teams in the country, but they're really efficient on offense. 11th ranked adjusted efficiency on offense, according to Ken Pomeroy. They're the second best three-point shooting team in America, which is interesting because I believe, last I checked, BYU's number one. So the two best three-point shooting teams in America are in the WCC, along with Gonzaga, who's one of the most efficient offenses in the country. On the road this year, St. Mary's has won at San Francisco. They won at Pepperdine. They won at Loyola Marymount. They won at San Diego. But they lost at Pacific in four overtimes, and they lost by two at BYU. So it's no guarantee here. Santa Clara, 37th quickest tempo. They're ninth in the country in shortest offensive possession. So once again, we're looking at a situation here where you're going to get a lot of shots and a lot of opportunities. Santa Clara's lost five in a row. Their defense has let them down. They've given up 85 points or more three times over that stretch. Their offense is okay. 60th in two-point percentage, 64th in three-point percentage. So they're okay. But here's the caveat here. So you think they might Sam, St. Mary's might look ahead here, but I don't think so because St. Mary's lost at home to Santa Clara 67-66 earlier in conference play. It was a 68-possession game. St. Mary's was down six at halftime, but they had a nine-point lead with about 10.36 left to go in the second half. Gales shot absolutely terribly, 34.2% from two-point land. They out-rebounded the Broncos, and they got 30 points from Jordan Ford. It wasn't enough. They lost 67-66. Um, you're the t- the t- the uh, total guy here, but I'm thinking here when you think of St. Mary's, it's harder for them to slow down a game. Plus, Santa Clara is quick, and if they miss shots, there's going to be a lot of possessions. To me, Drew, I know the 143 is a little higher, and I know they only got to 133 at St. Mary's, but then I look at St. Mary's shooting 34% from two-point land, and if you adjust some things a little bit, you figure they shoot a whole lot better at home. This feels like St. Mary's should win this game, but uh, do you think that the over might be in play here as well? Um, it, it's always tricky when you have this kind of dynamic I mean, major Matt, you know, we have one of the fastest teams in the country versus literally one of the slowest teams in the country. So to me, it always goes, okay, who's going to control this pace? Obviously it's going to be somewhere in between, but usually one team controls it a little bit more than the other. Um, and this is a real contrast. This is where I really struggle and usually stay off just because I haven't, I don't have the magic potion to to the tempo and it's St. Mary's in my opinion is the more talented team. They are the likely the more talented team, but they're also the road team. So it's kind of contract, you know, really arguments to both sides of it. I don't know, man. Uh, this, I, I don't have a good answer for you. Well, so and, and if St. Mary's would have beaten Santa Clara at home, I'd say, all right, my play here is Santa Clara, I think, because St. Mary's will be looking ahead to Gonzaga. But with the revenge factor here and a St. Mary's team that's very prideful, they don't lose a ton of games in the West Coast Conference. It would make me think to take St. Mary's. But, you know, me and when we as we've done these podcasts, I hate laying especially five and a half or six, whatever the number is on the road here. So this was more of like a, a watch and win situation. You know what? We talk about it every week, Drew. This could be a perfect live betting game. Get a sense of what the tempo is. Get a sense of how invested St. Mary's is. How well are they shooting? Is Santa Clara getting a lot of possessions? Are they making shots? I feel like maybe this is one of those games, Drew, where we talk about each week. Perfect live betting situation. I know those on the East Coast, it's 11 o'clock. You're probably not going to be up watching this game. But if we see that St. Mary's is getting whatever they want, Maybe you jump in on the over. Maybe you jump in on St. Mary's in the first half, Santa Clara in the second half, because maybe St. Mary's looks ahead to Gonzaga. This feels like a very a viable live betting game, actually, the more I think about it, Drew. I, I could see that. Absolutely, Matt. And um, a question here, St. Mary's, uh, if they perform well here down the stretch, make a run in the tournament, in the West Coast tournament here, do you think they, they're live for a bit in, the, in March Madness or no? Oh, no, I definitely think they do. I, uh, I'd i have to look and see what Joe Lenardi has, but I'm pretty sure that they're in right now anyway. I'm pretty sure we got a three-bid WCC, which is about normal for the WCC. It's pretty crazy when you think about it. I'm pulling up Joe Lenardi's latest uh, thing here. Yeah, he's got three West Coast Conference teams in. So I think St. Mary's is in. I don't think a loss to Santa Clara would uh, uh, make them any less in. Uh, certainly, if they lose to St. to Santa Clara and then Gonzaga and then whoever in the West Coast right. Conference, that's a possibility. But I mean, I think St. Mary's is going to win this game. I don't get see them getting swept by Santa Clara. Yeah, Lenardi has a three bid West Coast Conference. They're not even the last four buys, so they're pretty comfortably in right now, and they've got a decent profile. So that's not as much of a worry here. And certainly, that's something they consider down the stretch for teams that have things to play for when it comes to the NCAA tournament. Nobody's really playing for the NIT, but certainly if you wanted to, uh, there are teams that are going to keep playing and try and get an NIT bid. Do you find yourself betting the NIT, CIT, all those those tournaments as well? Oh, yeah. 
That's my favorite stuff. I actually enjoy betting those more. I know that kind of fits with the whole mid-major thing because it's the mid-major tournaments, but I actually find more value in the NIT, the CBI, the CIT. You find out who wants to be there, and you bet against the teams that don't want to be there. And, I, you know, I'd have to read up on the new rule changes because every NIT, they have new rule changes. But, like, I, you know, there's certainly a lot of money to be made in those big tournaments because um, everybody bets on the NCAA tournament. You're going to find a lot of plays on my page on the NIT and the CBI and the CIT because I just think there's more money to be made there. That's not to say I'm not going to bet the big tournament, and we'll do that stuff as we go along here. But, yeah, I, I'm a big uh, involver in the NIT, the CBI, and the CIT. He's mid-major Matt at mid-major Matt on Twitter. Mainstay here on the podcast, so stay tuned throughout our conference tournament and March Madness here, guys. Uh, and check him out at sportsmemo.com. His full season package will include all tournaments and every play he releases. So best bet time here, mid-major Matt. Where are we going? Well, I mean, I think you know. I mean, it's the Is same it? best bet. It's the same best bet we've done, and it hit last time. By the way, I was sweating bullets. So the B, the Gonzaga BYU game, I think, was four four at the first TV timeout, and I was sitting there saying, "Oh my God, for the second straight time, is this over? Not going to hit?" And then they go nuts, and we were still off pace, I think, by like the eight minute mark. But then the threes and the fouls and everything. I mean, look, it's 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 the permanent one, pretty much here. It's the over in the Gonzaga first half. Uh, I'm looking here. It's one forty eight and a half uh, when we're doing this. One forty nine. I don't know how to figure it out. Last time we had the number and it was a lot lo lower. Uh, I'm thinking it's going to be 72, 73 maybe, but I don't care. Gonzaga is due for one of these blowouts here. They played poorly against BYU. The offense hasn't been clicking as much in the first half. I'm just going to keep riding this, Drew. I know that sometimes people want this extensive handicapping, but like to me, it's pretty simple. Gonzaga's got San Diego at home. They're coming off a big loss. I think Gonzaga comes out with a motivated effort in the first half. I think they put up their usual 50 in the first half. San Diego gets us, I don't know, 23, 24. We get like a 50, 24 first half or whatever we need, and it goes over the first half. So you can keep asking me that question, Drew, but I think you know the answer. Gonzaga first half, best bet for the uh, Thursday card. All right. Mid-Major Matt, great stuff as always, man. Guys, follow him on Twitter at Mid-Major Matt. Myself on Twitter at Drew Martin Betts. Feel free to ask any questions. And uh, Mid Major Matt, anything else you want to throw out before we shut this down? I actually think we did get a question there, Drew. We actually oh, go for it. We actually did get a question from uh, Top Flight Sports on Twitter, who okay. asked us: Should San Diego State be an auto fade against the number, knowing they will probably be overvalued regardless, and a two seed is probably better for them? Could you see them not putting much emphasis on these games leading up to the tournament? You mean, yeah, I mean, they just proved it, you know, in their in their last game, I feel mid-major Matt. Uh, I, I don't know. How do you feel? I've never been. I mean, we've talked about this. I've never been a big San Diego State guy. Now, look, part of that is I haven't watched as many of their games as everybody else does on the West Coast. But I just think, you know, the Mountain West somewhat is down this year. Their numbers look really good on Ken Palm. I don't think they're they're certainly not going to play for a two. So let's like scrub that out of here. I don't think they're playing for a two. They're playing at Nevada on Saturday. It looks like, according to Ken Pomeroy, they'll be about a seven-point favorite on the road. Nevada's so hit or miss. Um, I, I I don't know what the real San Diego State is because they didn't play well against Colorado State. I don't think I actually will take them to win the Mountain West tournament. I, I think that there's other teams who could get them, and I don't think it's the worst thing in the world for them to lose, but they're certainly not going to play like that. I think Vegas is going to continue to to rank them and, and rate them the the way they think. And, and it's just our job to decide, do we agree with that? I'm not a San Diego State guy, but you might be or another person on our website might be. So it's personal preference. I'm not I'm not a big San Diego State guy. I think Dayton goes farther than them in the NCAA tournament. All right, Mid Major. Great, great stuff. As always, uh, guys, we'll be back on Friday. Best of luck with your bets.